Hi, fashion dolls. It is Transformation Tuesday, January 31st. We are closing out the end of January with two amazing interviews today, fashion dolls. First, we have Kennedy Samario II. And yes. All right. And then Jason Tola will be joining us at 4. So make sure you guys tune in at 4 p.m. as well. So without further ado, let's welcome our first special guest all the way from Port Harcourt, Nigeria, Fashion Dolls. And I'm super excited to have him here in the dollhouse. Kennedy Samario, ladies and gentlemen. Hello. Uh, hi, how are you doing, Steve? I'm doing great. How are you? Very well. Thank you. I sincerely apologize for the little delay. I think there was some technical issue. Uh, I didn't know this time since I had a busy day. Uh, I had finally made it back in the last card less than 10 minutes ago. And, uh, uh, you are good. It's such a pleasure to have you here. So before we kick off this interview, how has 2023 been for you so far? Uh, amazing. I mean, in one word, I would say amazing. It's, uh, I wouldn't use the word trying. No, it's been very, very encouraging and at the same time, motivation. So I'll use it with amazing. Okay, okay. So let's dive right into it. Tell us a little bit about where you're from. Okay. Uh, Kennedy to Mario II, Nellie would have to in America. Uh, where I Actually, um, I'm from Edo, okay? mm -hmm. <laughs> by origin, and uh, but I attended my I had my university that stuff. I attended my BSc certificate uh, in the great University of Fort Harcourt, and uh, yeah, I'm more like a uh, official, <laughs> or technically from Fort Harcourt. So yeah, uh, I'm from a Christian home. I uh, was from family. Five, three guys and two girls, and uh, I help me with a lot of kids. So, a great home, just you know, a regular African. Yeah, nothing much, nothing major. Pedigree wise, just a regular, you know. Yeah. So, where did you develop the passion for acting? Because you're not only an actor, but you are a TV presenter and a red carpet host. So, tell us a little bit about that. Right. Um, but you know, I, I, was, uh, I never had interest. Like, it, I never saw myself being an actor when I was a kid. It, uh, it happened when I got into the university. And uh, one time, a friend of mine called me and he was like, hey, come on, boy, I want you to come jump on this for me. Like, let's do this. And I was like, okay, I'm ready. You know, I was ready to have fun. And I did that one time, and it was cool. And afterwards, uh, I just started getting involved. And I remember after my school, after my studies, I, I left the country. And uh, whenever I come back home, I had a couple of friends who were into the film industry. They just like, right, hey, come over, let's, let's do something. Come over, let's do something. I said, let's do it. It was fun for me. Basically, it was just my life. You know, I was just having fun. But then I realized um, at some point, somewhere around 2017, I became like a cousin. Even when I was trying to help him with it, it wasn't just what I was doing for fun. It became a lot more serious. It was developing into a career. And then I started getting recognition and some, you know, awards. And I started getting um, getting roles like, you know, on the big screen, getting some major, major roles. And I knew at that point I needed to be more serious with it. So being a host, like a very capitalist host, you know, so TV presenter, that has always been my thing. Um, I realized this is, you know, like, uh, the, the, the film industry is big, it's bad. You know, you have yeah. to come into it and understand how movies are being made. You know, like, most people don't understand the, the difference between a, a producer and, a, and an actor. Some don't understand, you know, like, everybody has their role and they have to play it well. So, you know, like, to, to get a successful uh, production at the end of the day. So, uh, going on air, air presents 
everything and, and, and you know, host and it's so much fun for me. That is always in my heart. I just do it with me and then with an action thing to come out of there. It's just like it's made it everything. So, yeah. And speaking of acting, you've done a number of projects, so many, and Port Harcourt, you've done Queen of the Night, you've done, oh, oh my goodness, just to name a few, you've done Queen of the Night, you've done The yeah. Necklace, and Black yeah. Wedding. Out of yeah. all of your projects that you've done, which one holds a very special place to your heart? Thank you, Paterno. Um, I think uh, Queen of the Night, um, it's my favorite movie of the year. And I think like last year, the whole, I, I, I took out time to watch Queen of the Night. And uh, the next place, it's another very special movie to me. Because uh, I, uh, you know, you have to interpret the character that, you know, uh, it, it, you know the director looks at you and tells you, look, this is your person. Oh, you yes. already know what action is all about. You have to, you have to shift ground. You have to basically become another person. You don't act it. You don't have. You don't act like that person. You become that person. You become that character. So, um, uh, I think Queen of the Night is uh, is one movie that that I hold to as like my favorite movie of all time. But then again, uh, a movie that I would I think will always be I always look back at and it. it it calls for a lot of, uh, you know, you have to reflect that. It's not out yet, but <laughs> it's going to be out in no time. And when it's out, I'm definitely going to you know, put it up on my platform. But yes, amazing stories, amazing movies over the years. And I think, yeah, Queen of the Night owns it. Yeah, I give it Queen of the Night. And that is one of my personal favorites. I love that project, along with Black Wedding. It is amazing. Yeah. So... Getting into character, what is the process like for you when you're getting into character? Because you've done a number of roles. Yeah, yeah. Um, to be honest with you, I, I think this is one part that I, I'm going to be very, like, like I'm, talking, I'm going to talk about it the way it is. Most people say when they, when, they, when they get a role, like you have to do a movie, um, you, you, you know, you have to like uh, try so hard to depict that character become that person. For me, I become a different person in character. I I totally don't see Kennedy somebody anymore. I see that person. So uh, the, the last thing that I did, uh, you know, I had this really like uh, a madman on the street, like in a very you know open place, like a, a market square. And then uh, a couple, I remember one of my colleagues was like, "We don't think you can." Do this because, <laughs> because you know, you know people know you with girls. Like when they see you in movies, you either playing the bad boy, or you, you, you know, you're you're either playing the Nollywood bad boy kind of role, or you always with a gun. You know, it's always got to be something like that. But you are about to play the role of a mad person. Like you're gonna go like you know, literally go crazy in the street. And you know, right. like here, yeah, yeah, and and here it's kind of different because. Um, when you, as a person, you want to play the role of a mad person, usually there are a few things that is synonymous with that character. They want to write, either see you uh, um, maybe just, you know, laughing and, and that. But, you know, there, there are ways you can actually make people take it from you. Like, like they just be at the edge of the seat looking at you. And, and the best way to do it is not to do it like you been told or you see other people do it. It is for you to actually close your eyes and think if I was mad right now, what would I do? Because there are a lot of people when they're mad, they don't talk. They don't, they're always very quiet. You know what I'm saying? Like, they're crazy like you. Yeah, there, are, there are a lot of people who are aggressive. There are some persons who are aggressive. Like, okay, this person is insane and they're kind of aggressive. You know, so you don't necessarily have to do it the way uh, other people do it. You have to become that person and then let it come from the inside. When it comes from the inside, it takes over. Automatically, you don't see you no more. You see that person and that thing starts speaking and it comes out, you know, to you. And that's it. When I get in the when I get on the movie set, you know, like, I'm reading my script. I always walk up to the 
heard you and you're like, hey, sweet, sir. Oh, man. I have heard the street and I understand what it says. But I dare, like, is there anything specifically you want me to emphasize on in my distribution? I dare say you want me to, you know, make visible so that when the people who are watching it, like, so a director knows what he wants. You are just a, a tool. You're just a pencil. He uses you to write what he wants. Yeah. So when you when you position yourself in the right spot, he can get a good signature. But if you do not uh, put yourself in the right position, he's just going to try to use you because you can actually deliver, but you're not giving him exactly what he wants you to do. So when I walk up to the director, it's not because I don't understand what the script is saying. It's not because I don't know what to do, but it's because I want to see through the eyes of the director. Because I'm not just an actor, I'm a trained director as well. I understand what a director feels when they come on set. It doesn't matter who, who the actor is, how big you are, the director want to see something. There's something he wants, and you should be able to give him that, and that's it. So when I come on the set, like, I become a different person. Like, I just let that thing come down from the inside, it takes over, and then that's it. <laughs> right in that moment. So what advice do you give to actors that are looking to, to channel their character or get into the present in that moment? Right. Um, uh, I think it works differently for different people. They say different strokes for different folks. Uh, you need to understand what your, your comfort zone is. You know, I'm, I'm pretty much the kind of person when I'm on the on set, I don't really talk much. I'm not a talker. Uh, I could be very quiet, and you, you, you might find me boring, you know, if you're meeting me for the first time. But that moment helps me to articulate. It helps me to put it together. Because when you get so so excited, I keep telling people the two most vulnerable moments of a man's life or in a man's life is when you're too excited or when you're too angry. Whatever decision you make at those points is never the best. If you get so excited and you just say stuff and later you'll be like, oh my God, I, I, I didn't just say that. Yes, you did. You can get so mad and you'll be like, no, 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 I can't say this and you just, you know, take whatever action. And later when the whole, you know, <laughs> shit is down, you'll be like, hmm. And I think I went too far. You know, you know what I'm saying? So I, I'm the kind of person I like to take my time. And I think that most people, as, you're, as an actor, an aspiring actor, or whatever it is, when you're coming into the industry, when you want to you wanna be able to conquer, you want to be able to take over your role and deliver, like you want to ace that role, you should take some time, spend some time with yourself. Between yourself and the character you're about to become, that's definitely going to be a little struggle. You know, something is going to tell you, I don't think I can do this. I'm a shy person. You know, something's going to tell you, um, you think you, you, you can do it better than the other guy. You know, there's going to be that little, little struggle in, the, in your mind. So you need time to put a leverage between your real stuff and that character you're about to become. So what I do is I just let, I let it take over. Like, I let that thing come down. I just, Give it time. If I get too excited or I just, you know, get engaged in so many other activities, I might not be able to get it right. So I let that thing come out. So I give myself some time, and then there you go, right there. So I think most people should learn how to, you know, spend some time with themselves and a lot, especially after. Don't get too carried away. Don't get too excited. Take yeah. your time. That's it. Right. And just be in the moment. Just mentally be there. And I know for a lot of actors and actresses, it's difficult, but just find that place, find that, that zone that works for you, that gets, helps you get right into character. And I know there's a lot of actors that focus right in. So mm -hmm. we're going to do our games till with Kennedy Fashion Dolls, and then we're going to take some questions from the audience, okay? The first one is called The Rapid Five. And Kennedy has to tell us five things that he can't live without. It can be his favorite food his favorite passion, goal, dream, or whatever it is that he's working on. And then the next one we're going to do is called Turn the Tables. And this is where my guests get to ask me questions because I see a lot of new viewers out here for today's interview. So you guys get to know a little bit about me through Kennedy's question, all right? So let's start off with the rapid five. What are five things that Kennedy can't live without? Music. Yeah, that's my favorite. Right? Like, I, I think I think music is life. Cause, uh, I I I'm, I'm a music lover. Um, I listen to all genre music or type of music, and as a matter of fact, it it just it just helps me. 
You know, I've been through a lot, you know, and the only thing I can relate with, the only thing that gives me a violence is when I listen to music. And, and for me, it's yeah. like, yeah, it, it just, it just that, this, there's always a song for whatever situation you're going through. You know what I'm saying? And that's the irony of it. So I feel like music is what? I can't imagine myself without music. That's number one. Number two, what I can't live without, uh, hustling. Yes, I like to work hard. And I feel that that's what makes you an African, man. Uh, not just an African, a man, you know, in court. You're supposed to be a provider, a provider and, in, 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 you know, a facilitator. You make things happen, you know what I'm saying? And, and uh, I know people don't get it right every time, and yeah, sometimes the struggle is different, and, you know, it's real as well. But then I think one thing I can never see myself doing is put my hand, and, you know, and become comfortable with whatever it is that I think I have or whatever someone could give me. I would rather I would rather work hard to end that one naira rather than wait for somebody to give me a thousand naira. So for me hustling is number two. Number three, I can never leave without my black shit. I'm putting on a white shit right now, but I think black is meant for light skinned people. Sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, but I love black. I love black. It's like my favorite color. So, yeah, I, I can never, I mean, I love black, black rollers be my favorite color. So, the first three things is music, hustling, and my favorite color. And now, the fourth one, uh, I'm not sure of that. Now, I got to be honest. <laughs> I got to be honest. Um, Well, I really don't have too many things in my life, and I, I keep it simple. On social media, I read uh, from, from the public, like in the public view, it's like, I'm a bit different from my real set or my real life, like how I live in my real, you know. Yeah, so, but yeah, one thing I think come mind and live without, you know what I'm saying? I don't know. I, I don't know. But, um, well, if I just make the equation like complete, the equation I, I think mm, my favorite food <laughs> is an African delicious. Most people don't know this, is, but yeah, I love vegetable soup and semo. You don't know what that is, but I get it. <laughs> it's an African delicious thing, man. That's my favorite. You know, the vegetable soup and tomo is my favorite. And okra is also another kind of soup. So, yeah, these two things, I think I can have that like a whole day and a whole week. You know, I can just keep going. Yeah. And finally, I can even leave that out of God. It sounds crazy, but just, he's really the only one who kept me going. You know, just like I said, I've been through a lot. And we don't to if there ever been one person that is always true by me, it's in God. He's got, I'll, I'll tell him someone the other day, I was like, yeah, there were times where I thought I would have been dead and gone. Like, a lot of things happened, and the God kept me. So through the struggles and through all the things that I think I've been through, or that I've been going through, whatever the challenges might be, I think God is doing the most, you know, amazing thing in my life. And he's the real super. Right. Yeah. Oh my god. Number five. Uh, number five. That is five. Oh my goodness. So that is his rapid five, ladies and gentlemen. And we have a very, 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 very special guest watching this interview. We have international supermodel, my good friend. She's modeled for so many fashion companies like Chanel and St. Laurent. She's done Revlon. Uh, she's done CoverGirl. She's done Maybelline. Kara Young, ladies and gentlemen, is in the audience. So please tell her hello. How does that make you feel to know that you have people all over the world that are watching your work? And I interviewed Kara, and it was such an honor. She's one of my favorite supermodels, and to have her here watching. How does it feel to know that you have people all over the world watching you? I love you too, queen. Uh, okay, um, first, shout out, to, shout out to Kyle. I'm um, really glad to have you here. Uh, well, well to, the, to be honest, I keep telling people the whole much is given, much is expected. Uh, when you put in the work, you, you are actually passing the message. I keep telling people, you, whatever you do, just do it right. Don't try to impress nobody. Always understand this. Don't try to be in a competition with nobody. As our faces are different. Different, so the content of our heart, you know, and, and um, what I do, I do it 
now that I know it's more, it's different from what it used to be. It's more on, on, a, on a professional level. I am more careful now, and I know there are people out there who are watching. So I, I tend to be um, uh, conscious of whatever I do, especially when it comes to the acting. Um, then it, it's an amazing feeling, actually. It's an amazing thing to know that people are actually watching you. And for me, um, public review is everything. Um, when, when, when the audience pops back at me, it's everything. It, it doesn't matter if it's a constructive criticism. It doesn't matter if you're just, you know, just say whatever is in your mind. But when you speak back to me, it shows you actually know what I'm doing. And that gives me more reason to be, you know, to do more. As a matter of fact, it, it, it's an honor. It's, I, I, don't, I don't call the people who support what I do. You can have you can have colleagues, you can have social media friends. Yes. Yeah, uh, people are actually watching what you do, and I think at that point. Reasons you wanted to quit, you have more reasons to stay put and proud of. So that's it. It's, it's an amazing thing. I mean, I'm always very honored, and I appreciate everybody who supports my craft and whatever I do. Yeah. And it feels so good to have all the love and support. Like, look, you've got producers in here. Shout outs to Devon Tatum, um, who's an amazing producer, director, and writer. We have Levi Otis in the audience, who's also a, a amazing producer and director and writer as well, too. You have supermodel Kari Young. She's here. So it's just like everyone is viewing your work. They love your work. And they're, we're in the USA. So it's just like an all-around chain of love and support. So let's get right into the Turn the Table segment, Fashion Dolls. So Kennedy is going to ask me some questions. And this is for my new viewers out here to get to know a little bit about Miss Stevie for just watching the platform. So I'm going to hand it over to Kennedy, and Kennedy's going to ask me some questions. Okay? All right? Great. I'm ready. You ready? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> okay. All right, let's go. Uh, I'm going to ask you first question. You know, um, now, how do you, how do you deal with challenges? Now, challenges come in different. And I'm saying that this is a little bit straight up, you know. Now, uh, yes. everybody, you're, you're stuck here. You, you stay up here and you talk to people. You bring people all over the world and, and you interview them. You get to share from their life and what they do. How do you, you know, let out? Because I think that everybody got some, well, yeah, sometimes you want to talk to someone. You want to reach out to someone. When you feel that heat, when you feel that burden, how do you deal with it? Because I know there are a lot of people out there who work you and who want to um who who look up to you and sometimes half of the time people always don't understand that behind the the you know the beautiful picture behind yes. what we see in tv there's always some pains that we all have to deal with individually so now personally how do you deal with issues when it comes right you know the you know, challenges how do i deal with challenges well, my mom, she always told me to put God first in everything that I do, pray about it. And there have been nights when I've prayed and I've cried, you know, because we've talked. And it's not easy. It's a lot that goes on behind the scenes. Everyone sees, you know, the glitz. Like you said, they see the glitz and glamour and everything. But it's literally like smoke and mirrors. It's a lot that goes on behind the scenes that goes on to making sure that everything goes right. Because I'm a perfectionist and I believe that everything should be perfect, but not everything is going to go perfect. So just breathe, relax, mentally find yourself in a place where you can be at ease and you can be at peace. And when I tell you it's a good feeling, you guys can see it all over me because I'm just glowing with happiness and anticipation. You feel good on the inside. So that's how I keep my peace, how I keep my sanity and one of my guests just last week, shout outs to Juan Bashaw, he asked me this question. He said, you're dealing with a lot of personalities. You're interviewing a lot of guests. How do you put yourself mentally there? So he asked me something similar. 
And I just say, I tune out. I tune out to the negativity. I tune out to anything. Even some of the biggest names in the world, like uh, Beyonce. Beyonce doesn't feed into negativity. She she doesn't read anything about her. And me, I, I've adapted that same mindset. I haven't had any bad anybody say anything bad about me. And it's because I keep myself grounded with a great, powerful circle. And that's important in this business is that you have an amazing team and circle behind you 100%. And most importantly, you said it in your rapid five, God in everything that you do. So that's why I've been, it's, the success has just been coming in lately. I mean, and sometimes it's just like, oh my God, wow. All of these things are coming to me so fast at once. It's overwhelming. It's like taking a bite. Have you guys seen the big, big, big sandwiches, the big, big, long subs? And it's just like, okay, we have to cut it up. That's what it's like for me. It's like everything that I've dreamt of, hoped for, is now coming into fruition, into reality. And it's just like, okay, I've put it out there. You deserved it. I've manifested it. So I'm in a place where I'm happy. Well, well, that's a huge. Um, yeah. Now, I'm going to ask you a question now, a little bit personal. Um, <laughs> you know, um, when growing up, growing up, we had our fantasies, we had our desires, you know what I'm saying? Like, we, we all had things we wanted to do or become. And, yeah. you know, would you say you're living your dream, like, the kind of life or a profession, whatever you need, you wanted to be? Tell me what you want to be when you were a kid. I've always wanted to be a hairstylist, believe it or not. Um, and you guys can see how I always change my hair. I always change my look. So mm. I've always wanted to do hair. And I would practice on my dolls growing up. And I would watch my grandmother do my mom's hair and my sister's hair. So I said, this is something that I want to do. And I've always gotten into the business of making sure that people are aesthetically beautiful and happy. And and I feel as though when you put on a nice outfit or something, or when you do something in the vision, when you look good, you feel good. So hairstyling is something that I've always wanted to do. I've always wanted to be a beautician growing up. Yeah, amazing, amazing. Tell me about a feet like your circle. You have a small circle. You have a big circle. My you specialty. <laughs> um, um, I love doing makeup. I love doing makeup. I love playing with color and not only playing with color and makeup, but with fashion as well, too. And I feel as though when you add color, because I'm such a bubbly, I have such a bright, bubbly personality that when you add color to your life, it enhances everything. You could be dark and depressed. And I remember there was one day where I was just like not feeling, I was so depressed because it was gloomy outside, like it was raining and everything. But when I put on a pop of color and I do the show, the platform, it's like, wow, this big halo just comes over me like of happiness because color does that to you. So color has always been my specialty. I love hair coloring. Um, and as you guys can tell, I've had every hair color under the rainbow. Um, when I started right. this season, I started off with blonde, and now I'm back to black. So who knows what I'm going to do next month? You just got, you guys just have to stay tuned because I'm like a chameleon. I'm always changing colors. I, I don't like to stay the same. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Thank you, Cara. You too, Queen. You would have changed the class. You got. If you were to go back to the, what would you change? What are the things you would Ooh. like to change about you? Got? If I could go back in time, what would I tell my younger self? I would mm -hmm. tell my younger self, it's okay. There's no rush. It's okay. Just be patient. Just be in the moment. Just live it up. Embrace it. You're young. It's no rush. Love, live, breathe, exist. You are here. You have a purpose. And someone told me that not too long ago. They said, you have a purpose. Shout outs to my friend, um, Felicia. She told me that 
because I was down. And Kennedy, we talked that, that same exact day. She called, she texted me. It's like she knew. You know, when you have sisters and, and best friends, it's like their their antenna will go up and, and catch on to certain things. And she caught on to it. And she just said, you, you have a purpose. You are here. Don't worry about those who are not going to be there. Worry about, you know, the now, the present. So that's what I would tell my younger self. And finally, this is something to be one question, but I can make a lot too because <laughs> I can't help but ask the other one. Now, firstly, where do you draw your strength from? It's very simple. And secondly, do you have a, a man in your life? Um, I'm all glowing over here. Yes, I've been talking to someone. I've been talking, dating or whatever. But I don't have a ring on my finger yet. So when love comes, when love comes, when love comes, it's, it's amazing. And I feel all the love and support unconditionally. I'm happy to have a strong, solid support, core, support circle around me. And where do I draw my strength from? I would have to say my mom. My mom is my everything. That's, you guys call me queen. Like um, my guest that I had on yesterday, Jonathan, he called me queen. And I said, oh, me queen? The real queen brought me into this world. So I would have to say my mom, she raised a strong woman. And I grew up to be this strong, powerful woman that you guys see today before you. So I draw my strength from my mom. My mom is everything. She's always encouraged me. We have a great relationship. I don't even at this point really consider her. Now that I'm all grown up, before I couldn't really consider her as like a sister. But she, in a way, is like a sister to me. We have that type of relationship where it's just so much fun. And I'm like all grown up now in my 20s, in my late 20s. <laughs> and I tease with her like she's my sister or something. But it's my mom at the end of the day. So I, I love her to death. I, I couldn't do it without her. And my grandmother. My grandmother is another as well, too. She's a gem. She's one of the most, your elders are the, the most precious of diamonds in this world and you cherish them your grandfather your grandmother my my grandmother is is my diamond that i don't need to go out and buy a big tiffany's diamond that's the diamond right there because she's unbreakable she's been through everything that she's been through my mom and my grandmother these women just the women in my family in general through everything that i've witnessed them go through is what made me even stronger as a woman coming into my own in my late 20s because i'm 29 if you guys don't believe it or not so i'll be pushing 30 and now it's just like okay when i get married and when i get my husband and and you know we get our kids or whatever and so forth and so on that legacy will continue on so yeah great well thank you for this insight really insightful um answers and um, that's my five i'm just on the table and uh it's actually not having you on the other side of the table thank you very much <laughs> so in case you guys wanted to know that is the turn the table segment and it is almost time for our next guest jason toller do we have any questions for kennedy ladies and gentlemen this is such a great conversation and i hope you guys caught everything in this moment this is such a great combo and just some gems have been dropped throughout this interview okay all of this love in the comments from Cara to the Devon to everybody. Make sure you guys go and follow Levi, Devon, Cara, on my Island Yankee fraternal. He's in here. Um, coming up next, ladies and gentlemen, we have Kennedy Samaria, not uh, Jason Toller. We just had Kennedy. <laughs> but I hope you guys are doing awesome today. I hope you guys enjoyed this conversation. I'm just such overwhelmed with all of this love and just anticipation that you guys have given me today. And I want to say thank you to each and every one of you because without you, Style by Steve would not be where it's at. So I'm so grateful. I'm trying not to tear up. You can tell in my eyes, it's the makeup, you guys. I'm trying not to tear up right now in this moment. But I hope you guys enjoyed today's combo, the first one. Coming up next, we have Jason Toller who is an actor, writer, and producer as well to Sunrays Films, and I'm super excited to have him here.
See you there.